Hello, I'm Nancy Smith Maddox for WYTV7 in Charlotte, broadcasting as Shine Your Light Radio Ministry, and I'm so excited to be here today. I'm so excited for this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous woman that we have with us that we're going to interview today. You're going to really glean a lot from her testimony and a lot about what she's got to say. And at WYTV7, we say if we reach one, we've done our job. So we're real excited about that. We also, WYTV7 is a nonprofit. So we do take donations and seed money. And what we use those donations for is to promote our shows internationally. We do have international viewers and that's why shine your light is here is because I try to get other people to shine their light into the world so we can help other people. That's my only reason for doing that. And that's what WYTV7 does too. So without further ado, let me introduce this beautiful woman that we have today. Uh, she's very, very special. She has purple hair and purple lipstick. <laughs> and I'm going, when I tell you a little story about that, you're going to love it. But uh, her name is Carla Boyd. She lives in Clemson, South Carolina. A uh, very, very, uh, very, very great testimony and an exciting type person. She's going to talk about um, mothers of high-profile sons, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. She's also a juvenile counselor for the Department of Juvenile uh, Justice. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start. So Miss Carla, tell us a little bit about yourself and your testimony, like from when you were young and, and where you got where you are. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carla Boyd. I'm originally from Asbury Park, New Jersey. I was a military wife and I ended up in South Carolina when my son committed to Clemson. I always wanted to help people. So I felt like if I helped him get here, gave him a support system, and I just transferred my work here, that we can make an impact, a big splash once we came in. Clemson, South Carolina. Well, it really worked, didn't it? So you yeah. followed your heart and you followed what God led you to do and, and look what look what's happened. Now, uh, at your in your younger years when you were in, uh, what, where was it in Aspen Park? Where was it? Asbury Park. That As was State. Asbury Park, New Jersey, the Jersey Shore. Oh, okay. So when you when you were there, uh, do you have siblings and family still there? And did you leave your family to come to Clemson? Because that's a pretty far that's pretty far to go. Yes, I have I have two three brothers and two sisters. Wow. And my mom and my dad is still in New Jersey. Oh goodness! So you but still I, have you're still blessed with your mom and dad. That's fantastic. So you really took on a trek and a journey to come. Uh, that far for your son. So he uh, applied to Clemson playing football. And now tell us the story of, of him, Todd. His name's Todd. Tell us the story of him and how that, what happened when you got to Clemson and he got accepted to Clemson. Okay. We were, we were, I was a military wife. My husband was in the Navy and we ended up getting stationed in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh -huh. So we stayed there majority of his Navy time. So we, we stayed in Norfolk. And then when we came to Clemson, we came straight from Virginia here. We took a faith move, a sacrificial move. We moved the whole family here. I have an older daughter and the youngest, an older daughter, Sakina, a younger son, TJ. And my husband's name is Tim. So me, Taj, and TJ made a faith move along with Tim. We got some friends. They helped us move here. We took all of our savings and came to Clemson. And people were wondering, did Clemson or Dabo Sweeney assist us financially? And I'm gonna set the record straight. No, we took all of our savings out of our checking and savings, got some friends to help us move. U-Hauls pulled our cars, and they based everything we got in South Carolina on the credentials I had in Virginia. I took a $27,000 pay cut. Wow. To come here. I cried when I got my first paycheck when I started working here. But I, I thought, you know, I would make it up, work two jobs, whatever I had to do to keep us afloat. 
Wow. So you stepped out on faith big time. And yes. uh, so the move from Norfolk to Clemson, that's a pretty big deal. And so someone thought that uh, Dabney, Dab, Dabney, that, that he helped get you there, yeah. and he did. I mean, it was just a sheer leap of faith. And you, y'all got your family gave up everything to come and support your son. Yes. Wow, that's truly a devoted mother. I can tell you that much. And you know, that's what uh, that's what pe that's what people do because at some point in time, you got to decide if your children are going to have a shot or not. A shot mm -hmm. at something big. Yeah. In order to do that, they need their support team with them, someone that's there. I mean, can you imagine your son uh, being there alone and trying to make it? I mean, it just it would have been too difficult, really, too too difficult because so much can go awry when they don't have their their support, especially their mothers with them. So, but my uh, my son uh, also he's a lot older than your son, but uh, he went. We lived in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. That's where my career was as a CEO of a credit union for 25 years. And when he got ready to go to college, he decided to come to Arkansas to go to college. So he went to college 850 miles away on a golf scholarship, okay? Wow. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So I had 20 years in at that point in time. So when I got 25 years in, I decided to retire and move to Arkansas. I said, my son's not gonna have my grandchildren to be that far away. But I can remember every single minute that I had a vacation day or I had time, I was on that plane going to support my baby over here. Because that's a long ways away for your children to be. And especially when they're in college alone and they're in they're in athletics, it's um, it's just really, it's really hard on them. You know, there's so much peer pressure, so much can go on. And I'll tell you one more little story. My son always uh, talked about the, uh, the Greek, the Greek stuff, you know, the associations. And I wasn't raised that way. So I'm like, no, you're you're not getting involved with that. You're not going to any hazing. You're not going to be any pledging and all that stuff. But anyway, um, he, he did try to get involved. And the first time that he tried to get involved, he thought better of it himself because of the way we raised him. And he never, ever got in, in any type of association like that. And I think that's what made him survive through, through college being so far away. But I was there every chance I got. So I can totally understand your commitment to yeah. go with where your son is because that's like uh, adding hope on hope for him to make it to have his support team there. So tell us about his career and tell us what happened because I'm so excited for you to tell about Taj. Oh, okay. Well, when we got here, you know, we set up, we, we moved into Seneca, South Carolina. Taj redshirted his first year. That means he sat out and they groomed him, got him conditioned and trained. He, when we came here, Clemson didn't have a really good winning record. They had a new coach, interim head coach named Dabo Sweeney. Dabo Sweeney came to Virginia to recruit Chuck Taj alongside with a couple of other coaches. And he left a lasting impact on our family. He was a Christian. Everything that he got, he worked hard for. He had struggles as well growing up and we could relate to that so we believed in him he was saying that Taj came to Clemson he wouldn't promise him anything he said but I'll tell you one thing if if faith me and Taj we can turn this program around if Taj is coachable like he's been through his high school career wow so, so he believed in Taj, and Taj believed in him. Taj was the fourth quarterback on the depth chart. I mean, he had other quarterbacks in front of him. And he came in, and Dabo was like, you know, work hard. You'll be the best quarterback in Clemson history and a better man as well. And all that came, that came right into play. Taj ended up winning getting 10 and two records, 10 win seasons, bowl game, ACC championship. I can't remember if it was 1990, they, they won their last one, or 1980. You know, he came in with the winning attitude. And Dabo said when he was around Taj, he was a winner. 
you know, he played on a torn ACL in high school. He played in the Army All-American game. On wow. Yeah. He was an add-on to the Army All-American game because nobody voted him in. And we drove all the way to Texas from Virginia. And he was calling us saying, Dad, I'm not getting no reps. And I was steady praying, water in my eyes. And Tim was like, we almost there. We got 12 more hours to go. <laughs> that was a 21-hour ride from Virginia to Texas, San Antonio, to watch him play. And when we got there, Taj was kind of frustrated because he wasn't getting many reps. So the coach of the East team said, I'll tell you what, we're going to give everybody playing time. Who's ever on fire will stay in. Well, Taj ended up breaking Chris Leak's record on a torn ACL with a knee brace and being co-MVP. And I cried because I know we had to fundraise to get to Texas, collect money. Churches gave us money in Virginia. We did all we can to make sure we was there to support him. And we were not disappointed when he got that MVP trophy. And Absolutely. Was, you know, it just uh, it just seems like hearing you talk, you're not just the run-of-the-mill proud mother. You have a child that's uh, destined by God for greatness. And yeah. that's really exciting to me to hear that because so many children these days are just so down in the dumps and just don't really know what they need to do. They don't have the guidance from their parents to keep pushing them. I mean, I firmly believe that we have to push our children. Yes. We yeah. have to push them. We have to use the every bit of power that God gave us to push these kids. And, yeah. and I don't believe you're done with Taj yet for my conversations with you because he's such a great quarterback. I mean, just a great quarterback to put Clemson on the map again. That's yeah. a big deal. But yeah. I do think that he is he's a destined he's one of God's God's destined him for greatness and I do think it will come. But I think your devotion to him and what, what you did all those years really made him who he is today. And I think that was God's great commission to you was to do this, to take care of him and sacrifice and be there and do that for him. And yeah. good would come of it. So yeah. um that's really uh really exciting. So um People always uh, talk bad about things. People always want to put more into it than what it is. But I want you to talk a little bit about how you heard uh, God speaking to you about what you had to do with your son, how you had to do that, how you how you managed to do that, because you had other children too, right? Yes. And, and you also had the super strong in your hands. So uh, tell us a little bit about how God got you through that and how and some of the stuff that happened. Yes, we. I worked two jobs. They were kind of sheltered because we had transferred them to another school district because the football and the scholarship offers were heavy over in the peninsula, which is it's called the 757 Phoebus High School. They were getting a lot of recognition from the media. They had a good coach. Rest in peace. He's deceased now. He was one of the best high school coaches I've ever met. And him and Tim met, and Tim said, we got to transfer Taj and TJ to Phoebus if they got a shot at going to college. Nancy and Miss Libby, I had to move out of the nice neighborhood we lived in, a, a medium to upscale neighborhood with a fountain splash, a deck, a loft, a beautiful condo. And we went over to Hampton where it was very different. The kids rode school, city buses for school buses. Wow. But my kids never did. We make, I managed to take them to school every day because of the crime. And I was a little nervous at first, but I made myself known at the school. I found a way in time to let the principal, the teachers, the coaches, and the players know we're over here. We, we support you guys. I had to, you know, get to know the players. I would cook spaghetti, have them over to eat so I could know who my kids were around. Because at first, Taj and TJ said, we don't want to move over there because 
it was a rundown school, but they had a great athletic and uh, athletic and scholar program. And the crime was pretty bad. So we, we kind of sheltered them. I used to sit in the parking lot while they had practice and they wouldn't know and watch from afar because of the random gang violence. And I just wanted to be there for them. And well, you know, it's just, Miss Carla, it's so, uh, it's so tender to hear you talk about what a devoted mother you were. But, you know, well, that's why people need to hear your story, because these young mothers coming up, they need to know that if they have their children, they need to devote, devote a lot of time to them, because you don't want them to get in gangs. You don't want them to get in drugs. But, you know, you had to move from a, from a better neighborhood to a worse neighborhood in order to make the path for your son to take the path that he did and yeah. that's really that's really a god's that's god's plan all along but it's hard for people to understand that it's really hard for that but in in the environment that you were in had you not moved him he may not have even gotten a he may not have even gotten a, a scholarship to clemson that's you know, right you sacrificed everything for him you and your husband and look how it's paid off so uh, I'm really excited for people to hear your story because nowadays people, they, they, you know, sometimes it's all about me. It's all about me. And, and it's not about who we brought into the world that we got, we're supposed to protect. And that's one of the, that's one of the great commands to us is to take care of our children and make sure they're promoted and that they feel good and that, it, that this is what's supposed to happen. That is, I don't have a doubt in my mind that that's why he got a scholarship to Clemson because of you and your husband doing what you did. Would yes, you say that's true. Yes, and I want to encourage all parents listen to your kids, take time out, don't just push them away and push them off on somebody else. We we had that safe haven house where a lot of the football players would come in the weekend, we would pile up our truck, take them to football camps because their parents either worked two jobs or they weren't interested. We didn't see a lot of parents in the stands. And and if and I felt bad, I wanted to be that mother to all the football players. And I did that as well at, at Clemson too. When we got the Clemson actually to cook big old pots of spaghetti, big old chicken leg quarters and big pots of mashed potatoes. And I would let the football players, as big as they were, they were welcome to my home, even wash a load of clothes. I just opened my home always to know that I'm the mom away from home. And you got to take time and support your kids by any means necessary. Because if you don't, you can lose them to the street. Oh, absolutely. And I'm encouraging. Now it's worse than it's ever been, it seems like. Yeah. And I'm encouraging parents, listen to your kids. Do what you got to do to get them to their level so they can be able to thrive and survive on their own. I'm telling you, it's rough out here. These boys are at risk soon as they walk out the house. All colors, all races, all ages. Please support your kids. Go to their games. Tell them you love them. You have to. Or they will fall to the streets. And it'll be too late after that. Well, that's exactly right. Because the streets, uh, the streets bring a lot of bad things. Drugs, gangs. And a lot of time it ends in death or prison. Yes. That's why you got to you have to sacrifice and love your kids with all your heart and sacrifice. And it seems like you've been the ultimate mother to sacrifice for more than just your own children. So um tell me, let's talk a little bit more about Taj. Um what where is he now and what's he's doing? I know he went to the NFL to yes. several different teams. So tell me now what he's doing and what's happened and what happened with that. Okay. He um He's doing real estate now. He's working on these condos, these expensive lakeside condos close to Death Valley. They can be a condo, a hotel, or you can rent them out on the off season. And he's working- for Clemson, with, right? Death Valley is where Clemson is. They're, yeah. they're lakeside, they're, it's called Lakeside Lodge. If you Google it, he's the manager over those units. Wow. And he also trains twice a day. And he's also gotten offers to interview with Raycom Sports and as well as that new football league that's coming up after the NFL football season. It's a new league. 
endorsed by some wealthy people with credibility. So he's working on that project with real estate right now, but football is still in the realm for him. He trains. He's, he played in that NFL flag football game a few weeks ago in Atlanta. Did he really? Yeah. It was the amateurs against the pros, a team they put together at the last minute. He went and threw two touchdown passes in, the, in a few picks. But <laughs> to see him throw the ball and to see social media light up when he threw the first pass, he put his team called Team Hold That. He put them on the board first. Wow. And the social media lit up saying, why isn't he in the league? Why isn't he in the league? Why is he on the team? I think to, as a mom's perspective, I think when he got released from the teams that I think he didn't fight like he usually fought earlier because he knew he had his degree. He had backup plans. And some kids that's real hungry and that's their only outlet, they will fight tooth and nail to stay in the league. So he's he's hosted games on ESPN. He's been the spokesperson for Clemson with commercials, endorsements. He's like an ambassador. When they need someone to speak, he'll go right on TV and do it like a pro. So wow. he got outlets. But he's still I believe in my heart he still wants to play, and I know he does. And if you're listening, I love you, and I know you want to play. And I have done some some writing letters behind his back. <laughs> and I've gotten responses. Have you really? Yes, I wrote the team owner of the Bills, Nancy Pagula, and she emailed me back. And she said, we'll keep him in mind. Yeah. At this time, yeah. we are full. And I talked to John Gruden. Did you really? Yeah, John Gruden. We know John Gruden. We've met so many people throughout his tenure at playing football since high school to college to the NFL. We've met so many different people, and I kept their contact information. And I so always there's a, there's a lot of opportunity, as you and I discussed when we were talking. There's a lot of opportunity not playing and not getting beat to death, you know, yeah. in the NFL, yeah. at ESPN, even at Clemson. Yes. So something good's going to happen because you, um, you have, um, you have really promoted him and you, you've, uh, you've got God on your side. That's going to continue to let you, you push for him. So something yeah. good's going to happen to him. And, uh, you know, he may be really happy. Who knows? He might become a real estate, uh, <laughs> A real estate guru or whatever, you know. But still, um, I I hope that that everything comes out well for him. But uh, you also uh, are a ju juvenile counselor for the Department of Juvenile Juvenile uh, Justice. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that because I can't help but believe that that all ties in too with you helping people and your helping spirit uh, for your own children as well as others. Well, I I worked at Samasi D A R school. And I worked at Camp Giga, who was which was a department of DJJ. Um, low to moderate lockdown facility for all girls, and I absolutely loved it. I would inspire them. I was lovingly firm, letting them know I care, but you're not gonna do this. You're gonna have respect. You're gonna go somewhere in life. I have really took a lot of my pain from the past and use it to love on those girls and teach them how to turn their anger and pain into being successful and nurturing. I nurtured the girls. I took them on outings, Clemson scrimmages. I took them where no one else would want to take them because yes. I believed in them. And the impact that I left on the girls is real high because they're like, they're inboxing me. They're sending me messages, tw Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, saying, can we please have a reunion? I miss you so much. And I cried because I, the, the overwhelming letters and emails and messages I get from these wow. girls. You believe you know, it. You're just such an awesome. You're such an awesome person. You've made an impact on so many kids. 
lives and including your own and others. It's just very, very uh, remarkable to me. I'm so excited to have you on here. We are out of time, okay. but I, maybe I'll try to bring you back sometime and we can talk. But in the yes. meantime, I want this interview shared with everyone, all of those important contacts you have, because it might just be something, I mean, it might be something that uh, we can uh, get uh, Taj to do an interview with us and let him shine his light, and we don't know what will come of that. We just have to follow our heart and follow what God tells us to do, you know? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma that would be absolutely awesome. So I thank you so much, Miss Carla, for all the information you've shared with us, and uh, I want it to be an encouragement to children uh, everywhere teenagers everywhere all I want to do is try to keep them from the streets and I, I want them to listen to your story because your your son's story is so magnificent to be to bring the Clemson football program back to life that's amazing yes. so but yes. I thank you so much so um, without without with saying that we're gonna have to uh, sign off because we're finished we run out of time okay well, thank you all for having me God thank, bless. thank you darling all right thank you Bye.